Yeah, hello, I'm Neville Rowley. I'm French. Uh, I'm curator at the Gemälde Gallery and at the Bordeaux Museum for early Italian painting and sculpture. Um, what f fascinates me about Abi Warburg is the, how many dimensions he can take into his, uh, his creation. He's an art historian, but he's also almost a contemporary artist. Uh, he's, a, an anthropolog he's an anthropologue, he's a, a scholar of civilization. And every time I read Warburg, every time I look at the Atlas Nemosine, I'm fascinated in fascinated in how much directions one single person um, could have searched. And uh, this is why also I think that Warburg is so well known among art historians or artists uh, and, and not so much uh, among the public. So one of, of the objectives of the exhibition was to make him known to everyone. The role of early Italian art for Abi Warburg was extremely important because he made uh, his first studies on that. His uh, doctoral thesis was on uh, Botticelli, the birth of Venus, uh, the Primavera. Uh, it was the key, the, the, the Quattrocento, the end of the 15th century, the end of the Quattrocento, was the key for unfolding uh, the intuitions he had, uh, the Nachleben, the afterlife of the antique, he saw that perfectly in the works by Ghirlandaio and by, and by Botticelli, even if he states that it's not uh, the artist he preferred. Uh, the big Ghirlandaio picture that we have uh, behind us, he said, well, it's just an example of, what, uh, of how uh, the antique could be forgotten and then comes back into these uh, draperies in the wind or these gestures that are that were in the column, the, the, the Trian column. Uh, in the middle was the Middle Ages, the, a, a time where body was uh, much more compressed into a symbolic form, uh, and, um, and the draperies were also um, some of limi li limited, but uh, uh, the late Quattrocento was for Warburg a way of uh, brightening this horizon and saying, well, even the Baroque, uh, so 17th century art was also at, at stake, was uh, at play in the pictures of Botticelli, of Ghirlandaio. Uh, it's not, uh, um, I mean, so it's, he was feeling, seeing um, the Quattrocento in a uh, late Quattrocento painting in a uh, very new way. Did uh, I um, try to include other exhibitions uh, or, or other objects from the collections in the exhibition and to turn them into a Warburg sense? Uh, well, we did already because there are three objects that are in the exhibitions that are not on the Atlas Nemosine. Uh, the relief, the plaster relief of the Gradiva, uh, referring to uh, the connection between Warburg and Freud, a connection that is not so uh, easy uh, to state because both were not in contact, but there, there is a, sp a contact of spirit of thinking about psychoanalysis and the studies of, uh, of Warburg himself. Um, a painting by Botticelli because we don't have the, uh, the birth of Venus in our collection, but we have a Venus, a beautiful Venus by, by, by Botticelli, and a drawing uh, by Warburg himself after Botticelli, after drawing by Botticelli that is in the, uh, in the Berlin collection. So, yes, there are some objects that we included that are not uh, in the Atlas, so that, that are a bit against the concept of our exhibition, but we discussed that with Jörg Fölnigel, the other curator. We took that liberty. Um, there are 
thousands from drawing by, uh, of drawings by Abi Warburg. There are a lot of drawings by uh, Mary Hetz, uh, Mary Hetz Warburg, the wife of uh, Abis, who was doing uh, drawings uh, for him at one stage. Uh, the drawing that we have in, in the exhibition is a bit special. It is related to the, uh, to the theme of the nymph. I know it from a book by Georges Didier Berman, one of the greatest specialists of, uh, of Warburg, and it's described as a drawing, and I asked at the Warburg Institute if they had it, if it could perhaps travel to our exhibition, and, and in fact, we discovered uh, with the archivist of the Warburg Institute, Claudia Vedepol, who was very important for the organization of the exhibition, uh, she told us, well, this, it's not exactly a, um, a drawing, it's a, a pause, it's tracing after a drawing by Botticelli. Uh, and the original drawing by Botticelli is in Berlin. The whole, well, the, there's um, um, a lot of, uh, I mean, the great series of drawing from the Divina Commedia by Botticelli that are here. Two are in the Atlas, but it's very difficult. It was not possible to, to show them because they are constantly shown and fragile and, uh, and, and we, won't, we don't want to damage the works of art so for, when making exhibitions. So we, try, we managed to mention this aspect of the Botticelli drawings by Dante with this figure of the Nympha with Dante himself, um, traced by Warburg after Botticelli. And um, when I went to, to London, to the Warburg Institute, I asked uh, Claudia Vedepol, the, uh, the, the, the archive person, just to, to make a tracing of the tracing. So uh, she made that. I came back, put that in my, uh, my notebook. I came back to, to Berlin, and then I went to the Kupferstich cabinet. I could compare with the original, with the facsimile, that it was exactly the same dimension. So it just, um, so with the tracing of the tracing of the tracing, we just mm, discovered that it was uh, related and made by Warburg himself for studying uh, this figure of the nympha he was about to fall in love uh, with because it was before his, um, his text of 1900 uh, about the, the nympha uh, Fiorentina. Uh, and um, the question is, does Warburg, uh, or did he make this tracing after a facsimile book or after the original? Uh, has he, he had his, entry, his entrance in the, in the, in the Kufosich cabinet? So naturally for conservatory reasons, the first option uh, after a facsimile is much more uh, uh, relieving. But uh, for me, I think that would be also very interesting to imagine Warburg doing that very quickly. Uh, perhaps with the, um, the, um, with the agreement of the curator of the room, uh, just doing this tracing very, very carefully and quickly after, uh, after the, the original drawing by Botticelli. It remains, uh, it remains a mystery, but the exact di date we have right now, and it's part of his own research uh, of drawing exactly these forms. Uh, and yeah, I think it's uh, the parallel between Warburg as a curator, Warburg uh, was an artist like Dürer. Uh, it's, he was not comparing himself as an artist, but he was creating. He had to, um, and he, has, he had to use his hands, the, his hands to, for, doing, for drawing, for tracing, his hands also for pinning the, the photographs in one order, then uh, change them a bit, and it was something very, very important. The number of uh, contemporary pictures in the Atlas is not so much uh, um, as compared to the works from the antiquity or the Renaissance. It's only the last few um, plates of the Atlas. Perhaps if, you, if Warburg would have lived a bit longer, he would have uh, used more of this, but he was not um, so much as we would have been now interested in visual culture. He was grasping and seeing some things, uh, especially during the First uh, World War. He took some, a lot of material and documentation about the, the fights in, the, in the, the, third, the First World War. But after that, um, I think that the, the, the case of the, of the, the cookbook is, is uh, easy because they are uh, in, the, in the plate 77, there's the, cook, the cookbook uh, is as an object. 
And uh, there's also a black and white advert advertisement that he found in some, uh, in, in some uh, newspaper. So for me, he just uh, folded up a newspaper, uh, saw that, and then ordered uh, the cookbook uh, b just because it was too much related to, the, to his own study with Tobias and the Angel. And the back of the book, this is also something that is not in the catalog, but uh, that we had the, the chance of having uh, well, two uh, versions of the book in the in the Museum for, for Europäische Kunst. We had both of them because the the back of the cover is a Puto is a yeah is a boy with um, with um, with a fish that is so much related with a famous uh, Renaissance sculpture uh, by Verrocchio uh, in the Palazzo Vecchio now in, now in Florence uh, Puto with a dolphin that. Uh, that it's impossible that, well, it could have been so that Warburg had seen it. And we, we discovered after that in one of the earlier versions of Nemosine of the, of the Atlas, he made this juxtaposition. So I think that, uh, yeah, he was very attentive to that, but he would have perhaps developed this interest in contemporary imagery. He did that in the last years of, the, of his life, and one of the most Exemplary cases is the uh, the lecture on the postage stamps, uh, where um, he makes a, a complete lecture on that. So that means a lot of documentation and a lot of scholarship. All the scholarship that he used for uh, late 15th century painting, he adapted that for postage stamps. And I think it's uh, as a method, it's really something that is uh, that is very useful to do. Well, uh, we, I think that all curators are basically doing what uh, Warburg is, was doing in his atlas. That means you have a, a panel and you are pinning uh, the works of your exhibition on, the, on one panel to understand does that work or not. If this panel is a PowerPoint uh, or something digital, it's just exactly the same. Uh, so we are all, all curators are a bit uh, Warburgians in, so, in, so, in some way. Uh, then what I like also the, is the way that he's um, hanging thing upon, upon another. This is not the tradition of my museum to do, to do so, but in some aspects I, I managed to do that very, some of independent, a bit independently, but uh, uh, is it really independent? In the, in the Bode Museum last year, um, I had the opportunity to rehang a room of the, um, uh, of the great donor James Zimon. He gave that for the opening of the, of the, the Bode Museum in 1904. Uh, provided that he would stay in one room um, and this was not the case because of the Nazi period, of the war, of the Cold War and so on and we just uh, recomposed that. And it's a bit like uh, recomposing an atlas that you know only for black and white photographs and you follow that and you discover that some painting has no, not the, the original frame or the frame that it, it had in 1904 uh, and it's a bit like, a, like an atlas. So yes, I think there are, there are some connections uh, even if uh, we try to, um, I mean, the, the, the Warburg himself was a curator. I mean, the, the, the whole Atlas Mnemosine is a, is a big act of uh, curatorship uh, with objects that are uh, now are works of art and that are going to be rehung exactly as they were in the Haus der Kultur and the Welt. So uh, yes, there, there are some connections, I think. We are, did we have fun to, to, to have the exhibition? Yes. <laughs> yes, because of many reasons. Uh, Warburg is fun. Uh, we are not Warburg specialists, but we are fascinated for a long time uh, with Warburg, and we have this, the a complementary view with your Fölnagel uh, that is really helpful also to to have. Uh, and also, uh, we work at the, the in the Berlin museums for um, some years right now. He, uh, Jörg Fölnagel for um, two de decades, I guess, uh, but me for seven years, and just. 
We have 10 collections of the, of the museums. We are uh, incredibly grateful of every uh, collection who lent us some, uh, some work. Some, some of them we asked, some of them were suggested and say, well, perhaps you should, uh, you should use that or this book or, uh, and it's, it, it's really, uh, really fun to, to work in this, uh, uh, in this kind of, um, of synergy because uh, yes, we, uh, we had the, um, the pretext uh, well, the lack of knowing that there was going to, do, to be an exhibition in the Haus der Kulturwelt and say, well, we have uh, less than one year to do a show. Uh, let's do it. And everyone was very acceptive and uh, in our institution, but also at the HKV and at the Warburg Institute. So, yes, it was a lot of fun.